In this video, I'll share with you guys lots of games running on my own Super Nintendo. This is not emulation, this is real hardware running several games. So let's start talking about the Super Nintendo because it was an amazing video game console and also it was very important for the industry because it was a powerhouse full of amazing releases. A lot of successful video game IPs started on the Super Nintendo and a lot of IPs that started before it got better, improved a lot on the Super Nintendo. This console was originally released in Japan as the Super Famicom and that was in the year 1990. Ano? Super Famicom ga. Then, in 1991, it was released in North America as the Super Nintendo, and in the following year, it was released in Europe. The Super Nintendo is a fourth generation console, and it competed directly against the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. In the fourth generation, we also had the Neo Geo, but SNK had a different strategy for it. And some people consider the PC Engine, the Turbo Graphics, a fourth generation console, but to me that's debatable because the PC Engine was somehow boxed in between the third and the fourth generations. Regarding sales, the Super Nintendo won the generation, selling around 50 million units. Second place was the Genesis, with around 35 million units. The PC Engine sold around 10 million units, and the Neo Geo sold around 1 million units. In my opinion, the Super Nintendo really deserves the win, since, to me, it had the best library of games of its generation. Regarding the setup I used for the gameplay recordings, I used a Super Nintendo Baby with an RGB mod, a GameScare SCART cable, a GameScare SCART switcher, a RetroTINK 5X, and an Evermedia GC573. Let's start with Super Mario World, because this game, it, it really shows the big leap from the Nintendo to the Super Nintendo, because in terms of visuals, it is far superior than Mario 3. And also in terms of design, it got a lot of concepts that started in Mario 3, and then it elevated those designs, those concepts, to a new level. Regarding the, the world map, for example, it's fully interconnected now in Super Mario World. We have also secret stages that we access via secret exits in the stages, in the levels. We have in Super Mario World the first appearance of Yoshi, and that brings a new layer of gameplay for the game. And overall, it's a super fun game, it has an amazing soundtrack. I love the level design of this game, and the gameplay capture looks amazing. <laughs> it's impressive. Let's also talk about a ROM hack of Super Mario World that I really recommend. This is Peach's Adventure. It's impressive to see what the developer was able to do, because this looks amazing. This looks very unique. Even though it's based in Super Mario World, it looks quite distinct. It plays really well. A famous Nintendo IP that started on the Super Nintendo was Star Fox. And this game was very advanced for its time. It used an extra chip, so it was able to run on a Super Nintendo. That chip is called the Super FX. This was the first polygonal game of Nintendo, one of the few 3D games on the Super Nintendo. And in terms of gameplay, it's a shooter that plays really well. It's a famous game, you guys know what I'm talking about. And this is the type of game that once you start playing, you don't want to stop playing. So I put this game to run for the gameplay capture and I ended up beating it because I couldn't stop playing. It's an amazing game, I highly recommend it. A 
Another impressive game on the Super Nintendo is Donkey Kong Country. It's also known as Super Donkey Kong in the Japanese version. The first stage is already amazing because it, it looks great and it has a lot of variety in the gameplay. Also, the soundtrack is, is insane, so good, super advanced for its time. And this game is fun even in the water levels. Usually people avoid the water levels, but the water levels in Donkey Kong are great. And also the soundtrack in the water levels is amazing. The boss battles in this game are, they're fun and creative. And of course, everyone remembers the minecart stages because those were uh, definitely not easy, uh, but fun, fun levels. This is a game that I loved as a kid. It looks great for a Super Nintendo game, but it doesn't play that well. This is Stunt Race FX. uses the Super FX chip. You can see why, because it's a 3D game running in a Super Nintendo. This game is full of personality. It's uh, very charismatic. But it doesn't play that well, because the frame rate is super low, which means there's a lot of input delay, input lag. But it's a fun game anyway, and I recommend it. You, you at least try it, just because it, it was special for its time. And now a game that was super important and even nowadays still influences a lot of different games. This is Super Mario Kart, so the first Mario Kart game. I loved this game as a kid and nowadays I see a lot of issues with it and those issues have a few reasons. So first, let me talk about the issues. My main issue with this game is the fact that it's super hard for bad reasons. There's a lot of rubber banding in this game, meaning that you can never perform too well. There's always someone behind you, so even if you're going super fast, someone will be there with you. And then the power-ups for you depend on the items you get, but the power-ups of your adversaries, of your opponents, it depends on who they are. And if you're playing against Luigi, for example, he's always using the superstar against you. And that's super unfair, makes the game super hard, but it was the first of its kind. So I see that the issues of gameplay, they happen because the team was inexperienced with the type of gameplay. And also they had a lot of hardware limitations to work with. And in the end, this is a game that is highly influential to this day. And now a game that is amazing one of the best rpgs ever honestly this is super mario rpg this is the reason why i love rpgs along with final fantasy 7. this was my introduction to the world of jrpgs this game happened because of a collaboration between nintendo and squaresoft and this plays so well the story is fun the graphics are amazing and the combat system is really good because even though it's a turn-based rpg it keeps you active, it keeps you paying attention to what is going on, because if you have an attack happening, if you press the A button at the right time, you deal more damage. If you're defending, you can press B and you take less damage. So that makes you active during the battle when normally RPGs didn't do it. And uh, this game, yeah, it's, it's fun, I, I recommend it. Now one of the first, maybe the first, remake. Remaster, I don't know. This is Super Mario All Stars. This version also has Super Mario World. And uh, yeah, this is one of the first remasters, maybe remake that I can remember. This has the first Mario, the second Mario, both the Japanese version, which here is called The Lost Levels, and the American version. It also has Mario 3. The visuals are upgraded compared to the NES version. And yeah, it plays well, it looks amazing. I love Mario 1, Mario 2, Mario 3, and I have played both in the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo. And yeah, all versions of this game, they're all amazing. This one looks really good though. And now a, a masterpiece, super special game, super special. 
plays really well. Um, you can really see that what Nintendo started with the first Zelda on the NES, it, the concept has evolved here. It's brought to a, a new level. It just plays well, sounds amazing, and you have not only one, but two big worlds to explore. And yeah, the sense of adventure in this game is amazing. One of my favorite franchises is Mega Man, and uh, the Mega Man IP had Mega Man X going on in the Super Nintendo. The one I'm showing you is Mega Man X2, actually Rockman X2, because I have the Japanese version. But anyway, what an amazing game. Not only you get the boss's weapons when you beat them, but also you find upgrades, so you can get extra pieces of armor to protect Mega Man better. Actually, X, <laughs> not Mega Man, X better. You get new skills and uh, this game just looks amazing, plays amazing. This is one of my favorite IPs by Nintendo. This is Super Punch-Out. The Super Nintendo version is the weakest among the three console releases in my opinion, but even then, this game plays amazing and it also looks great. In this game, we have a different gameplay mechanic that is not in the Nintendo Punch-Out, not in the Wii Punch-Out. In this one, we can charge a super meter. And when we have charged the super meter, we can use a stronger punch. And we have to use that to, of course, inflict damage on the opponents and beat them. Even though it's the worst punch out, in my opinion, among the console releases, because I find that the arcade games are not that good. But anyway, even though this is the weakest one, it's still a super good game. It starts super easy compared to the other ones, but it gets super tough. Pizza cake. I feel like it's mandatory for me to show this game because this is Super Metroid and everyone loves Super Metroid, I think. <laughs> I've never played it to the end, but it's a good game. It, it looks great. And then another mandatory game is this one, Chrono Trigger. I'm showing you the Japanese version because the prices for the American version, those are insane. And there are better ways to play this game instead of the Super Nintendo version, but the Super Nintendo version is the first one. I had to show it. It's a fun game, has an amazing battle system, scenarios, time travel. Something I love about it is that for a JRPG, this is a short game, so it's a good RPG for people who are not into RPG to try out. Maybe first try Super Mario RPG and then you try Chrono Trigger, but yeah, both are, are great. And one game that people love and I don't find that great is Super Castlevania, Castlevania 4. I find it to be more of a showcase than a proper game. And what I mean by that is that a lot of uh, visual stuff going on has no gameplay purpose. And uh, a lot of things that look great don't make the gameplay better, they make the gameplay worse. And I, I recently beat this game and uh, it wasn't as fun as I expected, but it is an important game, but if you want to play a 16-bit Castlevania try Bloodlines, it's better. <laughs> yeah, now let's talk about a fighting game that everyone loves, I think. I, I, I love it. Street Fighter 2. This was so fun, so good. This version, to me, is phenomenal and it's the one that I play the most. I love it. It looks great. And now let me show you the Super Game Boy, the accessory that allows you to play Game Boy games on the Super Nintendo. I decided to try it out and I had to build this weird tower because my Super Game Boy is Japanese. But anyway, I tested three games on it. The Machine, which is one of my 
favorite games of all time. This game has an amazing story, more than 20 endings, and uh, it's very special. I highly recommend it. And then we have Pokemon Red, which I loved when it was released, and nowadays I cannot stand it because it's so simple in a bad way, in my opinion. Yeah, the dialogues are, I don't know, not for me. And then Super Mario Land, first Mario for the Game Boy, fun game. Plays really weird compared to other releases, but yeah, it's a, it's a good one. And yeah, guys, Super Nintendo, an amazing console, lots of great releases, and uh, what you saw was not emulation, it was uh, original hardware gameplay. Not actually original because of the RGB mod, but anyways, yeah, hope you liked it.